Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the Road Builder YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making uh like the egg things, you know what simulators where they got all their eggs at, like the little stands. I guess technically they'd be incubators or, or whatever they're called. But yeah, we're going to show you guys how to make those, but more unique. So Pretty much every simulator has like the same kind of vibe going on. The egg is sat right on top of a pedestal or encased in glass, but it's like just a square. So you got a square on the bottom, a rectangle for the middle and a square on the top. And uh, they're all just pretty much the same. So what if I told you a way to change that? All right, now I'm working on a game right now that has to do with UFOs and aliens and stuff like that. So we're gonna take that main game theme and make a an egg incubator to match that theme instead of making it match the uh aesthetic of holding an egg all right so i'm gonna run through a couple examples of pretty common egg incubators we could call them so as you can see here ignore the egg itself or in this game it's capsules but what it's standing on it's pretty common so if you want to avoid this and hey let's go to the most popular simulator ever here we are in Pet Simulator X, guys. Literally the most popular simulator ever made. Um, in fact, these look exactly like the last game, except just cylinders. So maybe they got a little inspiration from the other game from this one. But as you can see, it's just a cylinder with a little price tag on the front. And yes, it does get the job done, but we could definitely have a lot more fun. So let's go ahead and hop in and make an alien themed one. All right, so to start this out, of course, we're going to need a round shape. So let's go ahead and bring in a cylinder and we might actually keep the 32 sides. It's a bit much, but I don't know what all I want to do with it. So the more sides, the better, but it's also a low poly game. So I'm going to go down to 16 and we'll still have a pretty round shape. Hop into edit mode, grab this top face right here, or we'll grab the bottom one and kind of snap it up just like this. Perfect. And I want to make it so the bottom right here has enough space to have that text of, hey, this is how much it costs. So we will make sure that it has enough space for that. But I also want to make it have some sort of a design. So let's scale this in just a little bit. And then we're going to inset this a little right here. Extrude. And then ES, bring it back out to where it was, bring it up a little bit. And then we're gonna do the same thing one more time. Inset, extrude, ES, bring it back out, something like this. And for that top one, I think I'm gonna move it in again. So we have something like this so far. And I'm gonna add a loop cut so we can kind of bring that uh, a little straighter like this. I'm gonna shade smooth and auto smooth right now just so it looks better throughout the time. There we go. Now, if I'm looking at this, let's go into this mode here, wireframe select all of this and uh, let's bring it down a bit because this doesn't need to be that thick and I think I want the bottom one to be thicker than the top one so we're going to move this up a little more and we're going to end up with something like this there we go now up next of course we need the tube itself so I'm going to inset this a little bit not too too much because this is like where the egg is going to go let's just extrude that this is tall enough I, I want to kind of line it up, keep it lined up just so it, uh, just so it looks real nice at the end of things, you know? Perfect. There we go. And I will need to separate that later because we're going to need to make the part here glass when we bring it into studio. So for the top, I had a few different ideas and I think, I think I just want to go for something like this. Let's do this, drag it up a little bit. So it matches the bottom, something like this, maybe a little bit thicker, drag this up, scale it in. Perfect. Maybe a little less and then drag it down some. So something like this. And then I want to inset, grab the top like so, maybe a little less, extrude this again, scale it in and end up with something like this. So the top, not too intentionally, but kind of looks like a UFO if you look at it right. And then this could be the beam of a UFO, but I didn't want to make it full on UFO because I've done that in a game before and I want to, you know, test myself and make something a little different. Now, what we need to do next is start adding in some details, which we'll probably do with coloring. I don't want it to look super over detailed, but I do want to add something that I just thought of right now. Let's say, let's go into wireframe and grab all of these. Shift D, then S, Z to scale them in, bring them out just a hair and scale them up make that solid and then i want to add a solidify modifier to this now this will be on the back of the egg thing mainly as a way to separate it from the map 
but also just as a way to add more detail. So let's add a solidify modifier right here. Now we don't want it to be too thick to where it's going into the glass like this, but just thick enough to where it looks like it kind of meets up with it like that. Let's apply that because that's all we needed to do. And now we could even add a design onto this if we think of any sort of a cool idea. I'll start by insetting it like this, maybe quite a bit more, something like this. And then I want to grab this vertex or vertice, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to grab the four on the outsides like this. And I want to scale those on the Z axis just to have like some sort of a cool design on the back of this thing. We may even grab these and bring them in towards each other a little bit. Let me unselect that one and then do SZ. Awesome. Now we're going to grab all these faces here and make something like that just so there's a bit of a design and I think it already looks a bit cooler. Now, how do we want to attach this? Let's move it back just a little bit and I think I want to have wires going from like maybe a box up here to the sides. That might be a little too much for a very low poly simplistic game. So let me let me just give a quick little think to how I want to add more detail to this thing. All right, guys, I think I got it. We're moving to the bottom for a second, and I'm gonna grab this face, uh, probably this one, actually. So let's grab this in a circle, go to select, and then check or deselect, and then we're gonna do Alt-E, extrude along face normals, and bring these out somewhere around right here. Now I'm gonna grab the bottom of all of them and extrude them to the ground, and then we'll add a little slope on the top side. Let me, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Now I am going to extrude instead of just dragging them down so it's a different sort of group. Like then I could click on this vertice and it wouldn't move the whole thing. Not vertice, that's definitely a line. <laughs> move those down, something like this. Now we have something nice. Uh, I might actually not make it, uh, I might not extrude it. Instead just scale it down because then I'll have a bit more control on how far down I want the lines to go. So now we could put these like way further down. I think that looks a lot better already. And I wanna add, let's say, oh, it's gonna add a ton of geometry, but I think it'll look awesome. All right, guys, I'm now grabbing all of these and I'm gonna extrude them along face normals just to add a little bit more detail here. Something like that, oh yes, I think that looks awesome. Now, if there's anything else that I would really wanna do to this, I think just some sort of beams going from the top to the bottom. I don't know exactly how I want to do that yet, so I'm going to play around with a few ideas in my head, and uh, I'll come back to you guys when I get something figured out. Alright guys, so I got these little tubes on it, and I think they look pretty sick to be fair, so we'll definitely get this textured. I am going to texture most of it within Blender so I can get some cool gradient effects on it, but there is some parts that I will have to leave untextured and do in studio. For example, these beams here and here, because I'm going to want those to be neon, and the glass here, because I'm going to want that to be, of course, glass and be able to see through it. So let's do P selection. And now I need to go here. Let's hop on inside of this. Yeah, here's a problem I do so much. I always forget to make like a, a ground, I guess I could call it. So if we press F here, now when we turn this to glass in studio, uh, you won't be able to see like the bottom of the machine. And I'll have to do that for the top as well, but it is no big deal, guys. You just grab the circle up here. F, fill it in, and it looks very, very nice. I think I actually did the wrong circle there. I should do one lower than that. This one. There we go. And did that fill? It sure did. All right, bet. Now, this thing's looking awesome. I'm going to go ahead and get to texturing it because I think it's going to look even better when there's a texture on it, guys. All right, guys. So, all said and done, here's what we're looking at. Now, I left a good bit of it able to be colored in studio. For example, say we want a blue one in the spawn. But if we were to have, I don't know, what's this zone? Uh, I don't even know. We'll say a toy, okay? Then we could change this to, for example, like a red. And then, of course, we would need to change this to the same red as well. So then we could change this to a red and kind of change the whole aesthetic. And this will be reused, resized, re-everything. I think I'm only going to use this one for the entire game. So it's pretty sick. And I do want to see more people trying to make assets that fit into their game. For example, a long time ago, I made a video on how to make unique simulator shops. And instead of using that same shop, I believe Bubblegum Simulator originated it. Think about your game and how you could take props from your game to make the shop. So I think stuff like this is very important to help the uniqueness of your game, as well as just like, I don't know, if you're trying to show this to people, they're not going to be impressed if you have the same thing every other game has. So that is going to wrap up today's video. If it did help you, 
and you want to see more content like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. Later.